Twitter's board has now shown complete contempt for its own shareholders by adopting a poison pill provision. They're effectively trying to stymie any take of a bid that the board does not agree with. This basically entrenches the board and gives them supernormal amounts of power. It shows a complete disregard for shareholders' rights. This is fundamentally bad for shareholders and fundamentally bad for Twitter. Now, my name's Mark. I'm a corporate governance expert in adverted commas, in that I've published peer-reviewed articles in leading journals specifically about anti-takeover provisions. So this is an area that I am quite familiar with. And in this video, I'm going to go through why this is generally bad for shareholders and why it is that Twitter's board should be held to account for adopting such an egregiously bad anti-takeover provision, removing the rights from shareholders to vote specifically on whether or not they want to acquire the company or to have the company acquired. However, if you have any thoughts about this, any thoughts about the adoption of this poison pill, let me know that in the comments below. And otherwise, of course, it would be great if you like the video and subscribe to the channel. So what has Twitter's board done? Well, Elon Musk, of course, had acquired slightly over 9% of the shares in Twitter. He was going to join the board of directors for Twitter, but then decided not to do so. This is likely because he had significant changes in mind for Twitter. He could easily have ended up criticizing Twitter's CEO, and this could have led him to appear to violate the director's duties, to act in shareholders' best interests, which ultimately he might not end up doing if he is going around saying negative things about the CEO, because that could undermine faith in the value of the company. So ultimately, he did not join the board of directors. Elon Musk then launched a full takeover bid for 100% of the shares in Twitter. He noted that this was his best and final offer, and that he was not going to do the back and forth game to use his words. Since this takeover bid was announced, Twitter's share price has not done spectacularly well. Indeed, he bid $54.20 for the Twitter shares and $54.20 per share, pricing Twitter at $43 billion. However, Twitter's share price notably fell the day after the takeover bid was announced. Amongst other things, this could have been because they felt that a poison pill could have been introduced, stymieing the bid, and or because the, one of the princes in Saudi Arabia had come out and rejected the takeover bid, arguing that the bid undervalued Twitter. However, I would disagree with this in general terms, because most brokers had put Twitter at either a sell or a hold. There was very little buying interest in Twitter. It has been described as a melting iceberg, where Twitter had been losing active users effectively. It didn't have many draw cards. It didn't have many draw cards because much of the rhetoric on Twitter had become increasingly vile, and therefore people simply didn't want to get dragged into accidentally being cancelled on Twitter. And therefore, Twitter was having issues, and big issues financially, and to some extent could benefit from being transformed. Hence to the scripture of it as being a melting iceberg with diminishing value. Therefore, in many ways, this bid was potentially going to be beneficial for shareholders, given the premium that was being offered. I was very pro uh, Twitter reaching out and trying to see if they could get board seats, uh, at least a board seat in Elon Musk's possession, because I do think he is one of the only people of any note that are still actively creating content and bringing people to the platform. Um, this was way beyond as, a, 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 anything that I expected, but it's really exciting. Uh, each year, the state of Nebraska produces about 250 million pounds of popcorn. We may have another supply shortage. That might not be enough. I think if you're a shareholder, you'd be very happy with 5420. I don't know what the, what the prince is tweeting about, intrinsic value. There is no value. It's a melting iceberg. If we're looking at the premium that Elon Musk was offering, it was going to be around 17% toward the most recent day of trade before the takeover was announced. 38% compared to when his holding was announced, and 54% compared to before he had started buying shares. So a significant takeover premium. However, Twitter has now adopted a poison pill. Twitter's board voted unanimously to adopt a poison pill. What this basically means is that if any one shareholder acquires more than 15% of the shares in the company, then all the other shareholders can acquire shares at a deep discount. This effectively enables all those other shareholders to dilute that potential buyer, thereby making it more and more difficult and or expensive and or impossible to do a hostile takeover of the company. This is fundamentally egregious because it undermines the value that that existing shareholder has. 
is effectively, because it was adopted after the fact, is effectively expropriating value from someone like Elon Musk. This is fundamentally poor form. To my mind, something like a poison pill effectively steals value from anyone who wants to do a takeover. In this case, Elon Musk is effectively preventing him doing a takeover after the fact. This is fundamentally repugnant. So, that's what's happened. How then does this poison pill even affect Elon Musk? After all, the shareholders could still vote their shares. A poison pill that stops a vote would not be legally enforceable in general terms. So he could still do a tender offer to acquire all of the remaining shares. In this case, that would be about 91% of the shares in Twitter because he owns 99.2% of the shares. However, there are some problems. While he could make his tender offer conditional on all the remaining shareholders selling their shares, and then he could perhaps try to trigger the squeeze-out provisions for the remaining tiny number of shareholders that don't sell, there seems to be a non-trivial number of block holders who, for strategic reasons, i.e. personal reasons, aren't super interested in selling. So Elon Musk might get, for example, 85% of Twitter's shares, which would not be enough to trigger a squeeze-up provision, but would be enough to enliven the poison pill, which would dilute him. The reason that might occur is because you've got that Saudi prince, who owns reportedly 5.2% or who knows how many shares, because that appears to be a little bit nebulous. He has said that the offer materially undervalues Twitter, which may or may not be correct in his opinion. He might actually just want Twitter's shares for influence. You've also got the board of directors, who because they unanimously voted for the poison pill, presumably don't want the takeover to go ahead. So you've got them as well. Now exactly how many this adds up to remains to be seen, but it could be potentially over 5% of the shares, maybe 6%, 7%, whatever it is. Automatically, Elon Musk could run into some issues. The poison pool could hypothetically end up getting triggered. And it is going to make it much more difficult for him to engage in a proxy fight to try to take control of the board and then get rid of the poison pill and then do a takeover. So implicitly, it makes the takeover much more difficult and or much more expensive and puts up hurdles and barriers to a takeover going ahead. So while it doesn't specifically stop a takeover per se, and there are ways to work around it, they are non-trivially difficult to get around the poison pill. This was, for example, the case when Papa John's adopted a poison pill, which was ultimately bad news for shareholders. And Papa John's share price did not do particularly well as a result. So in essence, this poison pill makes a takeover more difficult, more time consuming and significantly less likely to occur. It does not 100% prevent it occurring, but it absolutely restricts the likelihood of it getting off the ground. So Elon Musk's plan B Well, he'll probably need one if he wants a takeover to actually occur in this circumstance. Now, is this bad for shareholders? That's the first question. And the second question is, could there be a legal challenge to it? So let's go through those in turn. Is this bad for shareholders? Short answer, yes. Basically, they have undermined a good quality bid. Now, shareholders have every right to vote on whether or not they agree with the bid or not. Now, that is a shareholder's prerogative. However, the board has taken that vote away from them. It's fundamentally anti-democratic. Not only that, is this type of entrenchment harmful to shareholders in the long term. There's a significant stream of literature that shows that anti-takeover provisions undermine shareholder wealth. Admittedly, the uh, extent to which this is the case varies over time and with the other characteristics of the company. So there are several factors that can moderate this, and the strength of it is altered over time. However, the academic evidence shows that firms with more anti-takeover provisions have lower value. Firstly. Secondly, the core anti-takeover provisions that are the most repugnant and destroy the most value are a poison bill and a classified board. This has been shown time and time again. Effectively, they have adopted one of the worst two possible anti-takeover provisions, a poison pill being one of those. Thirdly, there are specific mechanisms of action through which Entrenchment destroys value. It can destroy value 
by enabling directors to go off in a frolic and do their own rubbish that destroys shareholder wealth. This rubbish could be going out and doing their own acquisitions that destroy value. It could be doing their own philanthropic activities that destroy value. It could be going and doing their own political activities that destroy value. Basically, it enables those directors to go off and do stupid things and not get disciplined for it. Because a hostile takeover to remove shareholders or directors, sorry, who are doing stupid things that destroy value would otherwise have been a disciplinary mechanism. So they can go off in a frolic and do their own rubbish. Furthermore, they can simply go out and spend too much money on random crap. This is subtly different, in that, under the first one, they're going out and doing things that actively destroy shareholder wealth. Under the second thing, they're doing things that maybe could have created value. They're just spending too much money and are being ill-disciplined. So that can also be what they might do. Thirdly, they might also go out and actively do things that entrench themselves. So now that they have a poison pill, they might go out and actively try to purge themselves of people like Elon Musk. So for example, if they don't want Elon Musk involved, they can actively try to get in his way to stop him getting involved now. Because now they've restricted the ability for a hostile takeover to occur. This can enable them to entrench themselves. All of these things destroy value. Effectively, the board here is fundamentally undermining shareholder wealth. Now, admittedly, this poison pill expires in 2023. However, they have shown that they would be quite happy, it seems, to just continually extend it. When he is rumours, then maybe they're going out trying to find a competing bid. However, a competing bid can come along without a poison pill. So, if it is genuinely the case that this poison pill is there to give a competing bid a time to get their stuff together, then maybe there can be a benefit to shareholders. But, they really need to fully announce why that is the case. I.e., they need to show that they are acting in shareholders' best interests for this to really be valid in any way. There's a slight caveat to this, in that there is some evidence that for very nascent high-tech companies, we're not talking major well-established high-tech companies, for nascent ones that are difficult to value, that have significant information asymmetry, maybe a poison pill can create some value. And it can create some value by preventing a so-called opportunistic takeover that simply takes advantage of low prices that are arising because of thin trading, a lack of information and the like. However, that does not apply to Twitter. It's a $43 billion company. It is a major company that is very well known. It gets a ton of analyst coverage. It is not one of those high information asymmetry companies that maybe could have benefited from an anti-takeover vision. So therefore, this is fundamentally bad news for Twitter's shareholders. The next question is, could there be any legal challenge to this? Now, this is probably something more in the wheelhouse of a practicing corporate lawyer in the United States. I can give you some insight into this. However, I don't want to pretend to be a practicing lawyer in the United States. I do not have a United States law degree. I studied law outside of the United States. So I am not as in-depth familiar with US law. However, director's duties are broadly similar across most common law countries, including the United States, Australia, and the United Kingdom. There are differences, however. And in the United States, there can be differences state to state. So it is worth bearing that in mind. However, in broad terms, for this to really remain valid at court, the directors need to show that they have acted within their director's duties. So this could be challenged on grounds that a shareholder alleges that the directors have not acted in the best interest of shareholders. Such a challenge is easier said than done, because it would need to be shown that they're effectively challenging this takeover purely to entrench themselves rather than to maximize shareholder wealth. In the United States, there's a construct called the business judgment rule, which basically argues that if the directors can show they made a genuine business judgment, that this would have been beneficial to shareholders, even if they were wrong, it is difficult to show they violated their director's duties. One would need to go further and show the directors were not acting for a proper purpose. That is not impossible, but it is definitely easier said than done. There is some rather helpful summary of this, which will be worth me reading out just to highlight some of the potential challenges to this. So in this summary, it basically asserts, since the company is a Delaware corporation, speaking more broadly here about Delaware corporations in general, 
the board's ability to adopt a poison pill is governed by Delaware law. Generally, the board of a Delaware corporation enjoys broad judicial deference with respect to its corporate decisions. Under the business judgment rule, a court applying Delaware law will presume that the directors have discharged their fiduciary duties to act in the best interests of the corporation and its shareholders, unless the plaintiff, here that could be Elon Musk hypothetically, is able to show that the directors breached their fiduciary duties. If a court determines that a board has adopted a poison pill to avoid an unsolicited change in control, then the court applies a more nuanced test, set forth in Uocal versus Mesa Petroleum. Adopting a poison pill is valid under Uocal if, one, the board has an objectively reasonable basis of a threat to corporate policy and the effectiveness of the company, a reasonableness test, and two, the terms of the pill are a proportional response to that threat, a proportionality response. As the Delaware Supreme Court clarified in Unitrin versus American General, a proportional response, one, cannot be preclusive or coercive, and two, must be within the range of reasonable responses to the threat. Although the original poison pools were used as anti-takeover defences, Delaware courts have continued to apply Uocal and Unitrin to poison pills that companies have adopted to limit activists' additional accumulation of shares. Notably, the Delaware Court of Chancery has specifically found that a shareholder's creeping accumulation of control, i.e. creeping control, by acquiring company stock is an objectively reasonable and legally cognizable threat that justifies the adoption of a poison pill, clearly if the other test is satisfied. Under Uocal, a board's reasonable belief of a threat is sufficient to justify the adoption of a defensive measure such as a poison pill. However, if a court finds that a board has enacted a defensive measure for the primary purpose of obstructing the shareholder's right to vote, then the court will likely invalidate the defensive measure under Blasius Industries v. Atlas Corp., regardless of whether the board's belief in the threat was reasonable. In Blasius, the Delaware Court of Chancery found that the board violated its fiduciary duties by enacting anti-takeover provisions, in this case, increasing the board's size and packing the board with friendly directors, for the primary purpose of preventing the proper exercise of shareholder voting rights. The court held that these anti-takeover provisions were invalid absent a compelling justification. The much more probing standard under Blasius is consistent with the Delaware court's repeated insistence that the validity of a poison pill turns on the shareholder's ability to have recourse to the ballot box. A poison pill, therefore, should never be used solely to prevent shareholders from voting in new directors who will support the activists' agenda. In light of Uocal, Unitrin and Blasius, it is imperative that the board begin its deliberations about a poison pill with a discussion as to what a poison pill is and is not intended to accomplish. As a shareholder of the company, the investor has a right to make proposals on major corporate issues and to vote during director elections. The board's primary purpose cannot be to obstruct the shareholder's right to vote. However, adopting a poison pill is a proper response to a perceived threat if the board intends to use the poison pill to gain more time to exercise its fiduciary duties or to increase its leverage in future negotiations with the investor so that it is able to resist demands that the board concludes are not in the best interest of the company and its shareholders. In short, a poison pill can be challenged but to effectively challenge it, it will be necessary to show that the board was not acting in shareholders' best interests. And in particular, it will be necessary to show that the board breached its fiduciary duties by stymieing investors' right to vote on and potentially accept Elon Musk's takeover bid. In short, the board is going to need to show that they have a better plan for what they are going to do, not merely that they want to stop a takeover. The board will need to show they have a credible plan for how they are going to improve corporate value for shareholders. This could involve legitimate, real negotiations with a competing bidder. It could involve them putting together a clear, cogent plan for how they would create more value than Elon Musk. A poison pill might be legitimate if it is short-dated and purely for the purpose of them showing that they can create more value or putting together an alternative proposal that does create more value. A poison pill is very likely to be invalid if it is purely there to prevent Elon Musk from acquiring shares. That would, to my mind, be a prima facie breach of director's duties, 
because they would not then be showing that they could do better than Elon Musk's $54.20 per share. And in fact, the fact that the share price is notably below $54.20 when this takeover appears unlikely to occur, would prima facie seem to indicate that this takeover bid is at least a better alternative to many of the other things that appear to be floating out there. That said, the board of directors might be able to show that it is acting in alignment with its fiduciary duties, but that is a heavy burden that they really need to demonstrate for them to effectively not get sued or be able to resist a lawsuit. So that is effectively what is happening here. Twitter's board has adopted a poison pill. This poison pill, in general terms, is fundamentally bad for shareholders. They effectively seem to be trying to wrest voting rights away from shareholders. They seem to think that they can do better than this $54.20 per share that Elon Musk is offering. For this to really hold up, that board needs to show they have a credible, cogent, well-defined alternative plan and or are able to actively go out and get a competing bidder in clear and concise timelines that enable that competing bidder to be a genuine competing bidder to Elon Musk. The board can't just adopt a poison pill because they don't like Elon Musk. The board can't just adopt a poison pill because they want to keep their jobs. If that's what their intention is, one, it is on dubious legal grounds, and two, that is fundamentally bad for shareholders and shows that any such director that is adopting a poison pill to save their jobs has no business being a director. Because if they're just adopting a poison pill to entrench themselves, they are fundamentally destroying shareholders' value. And they are fundamentally acting in their own interests, not shareholders' interests. And they should keep in mind that the shareholders are the ones that are employing them. They act for shareholders. And if those board members are going off on a frolic doing their own random crap because they don't like Elon Musk or because they want to save their own skin, that, to my mind, marks them as extremely low-quality directors and directors that shareholders should be extremely concerned about. So that, in short, is a summary of what Twitter is doing here. It is an extremely bad move. There is no problem with going out trying to find a competing bidder. That could be good for shareholders if they can get a higher bid price. But, as others have asserted, Twitter has been a melting iceberg, Twitter's financials have not been brilliant, and it is not totally clear that any competing bidder is going to come along and offer a better price for shareholders than Elon Musk. In any case, if you think I'm wrong, or if you have different views about this poison pill or about Elon Musk's bid for Twitter, let me know that in the comments below. But otherwise, of course, it would be great if you liked the video and subscribed to the channel. And hopefully I will see you for future videos as well.